he had his turn. He left the Quran and the Bible, he didn't touch it. But he did do something. And the audience didn't catch the joke. Even it was difficult for me to catch what was going on. You see, there was something wrong in his delivery. He was speaking at 100 miles an hour. And then he was reading, he was not speaking, he was actually reading. And he had some, the preparation he had made, he wanted to read the whole thing through. Whether you understand or you don't understand, that means he did the job. He wanted to complete his job, read it all through. So while he was reading, something did sound like the Quran. I don't know those of you who were there, you remember? He had this book. This book with him, this green book. This is a new production of the Arab Christians. What's the title, Yasha? It's hard for me to read. Seerat al Masih. Fasih Arabi. This is Seerat al Masih. You know, this Seerat in the life of Jesus, you know, in the Fasih, in the eloquent Arabic. So he read from here a chapter here. Uh, just a few lines if you read. This is what he read. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. This one here. That's right. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Qul ya ayyuha al-ladhina amanu in kuntum tu'minuna billahi haqqan fa'aminu bi wa la taqafu inna lakum inda Allah jannatin nuzula. Right. So you see now what's happening? This is in the Fasih Balikh Arabic. This they have now produced this as a challenge to the Quran. The Arab Christians have done this as a challenge to the Quran. Listen now, to the non-Arab, you can't judge, wallah. Because now the words are from the Quran. The words are from the Quran. They're using for their own now, but it's not the language of the Bible. It's insipid. There's, no, there's nothing in it, you know, insipid, even to the Arab. He realizes that there's nothing in it. Even the Arab Christian recognizes that there's nothing like the Quran. But so now, to compete with the Quran, you copy the Quran. So when you copy the Quran, you begin. Every chapter now begins. Of the Christian Bible, every chapter begins. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. And this is competing with the Quran to say, look, we produce something. I said, this is, you are stealing from my book. You are cribbing, you are stealing, and now you're saying, now look, this is like the Quran. Every chapter now begins with Bismillah. And the fellow does. You see, when we take the Quran, you open every chapter, it says Makkiya Surah, Makkiya or Madaniya. That this Surah was revealed in Makkah or in Medina. In Makkah or in Medina. So they do the same. They do the same. So they say these Surahs now, they say this is Makdisi. Makdisi. Makdisi means Baitul Muqaddas in Jerusalem. Nowhere in the Christian Bible, anywhere, have they got this sort of thing now. Then the words I have marked in green. Everything is from the Quran. What they do? They, borrow, they call this new science. This is the new science. They call it contextualization. Contextualization. It was a new word for me. You see, they had given me this book, Secret Instructions. That this must not fall into Muslim hands, the instruction book. But Allah is musabibul asbab. You know, if you are in the field, the things that come to you are unimaginable. So where did you get it, Mr. Didat? I said, don't ask questions. Don't ask questions. Look, Allah barit Allah, he sends it. Because you are in the field, this is his job. That if you are working for him, things keep coming your way. That means now, you are prepared. Allah is preparing you beforehand. He's preparing you beforehand. He said, look. Because otherwise it takes you off guard. It's as many sounds like the Quran. Could it be that they invented it? No. They copying, copying about from Surah Maryam. You read there, Zikr Rahmati Rabbika Abdahu Zakariya. So they start here. The same style, same style. They copy the Quran. It says Zikr Ta'budi Zakariya. Now the person doesn't say maybe you know something, but it sounds similar. Then Al Muttaqin wa Makana Shaykhun Kabir Lidhul Al Mihrabi. All these are phrases from the Quran, which they are putting that in the new New Testament to catch the Arab fish. That this Arab fellow, ignorant Arab, you know, he will fall for this. So naturally, 
the Arab who understands is mispronouncing so many things. He reacts. He reacts. He was lucky you know, that there was an exit from the back. Otherwise, I fear for him. <laughs> Some of the things I didn't mention, you know, something that you can remember, that the book that he gave me in the previous debate, you were there, yeah, Sheikh. You know, he gave me that green parcel. He said, you know, we Arabs, when we, we, are, we are taught that when we go to, uh, to meet a friend, we don't go empty-handed. So he scored a point. Look, the Muslim is empty-handed. He came along with this parcel, he gave it to me. But he didn't know what he was doing. This is Allah's way. This Bible is one of the most valuable Bibles you can get. This is what is called a red-letter Bible. Red-letter Bible. Everything that Jesus spoke is in red. Easy for you to find. You know how much easy it makes for us now? To talk to them? With this Bible. Red letter. Whatever Jesus said is in red. So let's say we accept that that is Injil. Let us say that every word that Jesus spoke that is in red is a we accept. For the sake of argument, we accept. So I said, let's have a look. What did Jesus say? You say the New Testament is the Injil? He said, yes. So well, let's have a look. The New Testament has 27 books. 27 books. Out of the 27, in this particular one, 21 out of 27 has not got a red dot or a dash or a doodle. Not even a scribble. Not even a smudge. Not even a red smudge. 21 out of 27. How many percent is that? You work it out. Then in the New Living Bible, also red letter, 23 out of 27, there's not even a red dot or a dash or a doodle. And you say, this is the Injil. You say this is the Injil. You didn't even quote Jesus. Leave out Jesus, God talking to him. But you didn't even quote Jesus in 23 out of the 24 books. He is not even quoted, not even once. And you say this is the Injil. However, in this so-called Injil, in this particular one, and there are many other Bibles, you find that Jesus is made to do funny, funny things, silly, silly things. I'm only reading from the Gospel of St. Matthew, chapter 21, verse 7. I didn't have time to read it there. I read it for you. It says, They brought the donkey and the cart. Donkey and the cart. Laid their clothes on them. On the donkey and the cart. And set him on them. They made Jesus sit on them, two donkeys at a time. I said, what this man is an acrobat or circus? What, what, what is he doing? <laughs> no, no, he's, look, look, this is, there's no misprint here. In the King James Version, you read, he, he's, and they set him, one man, on them, on the two donkeys. Can you imagine a Jesus riding two donkeys at a time? <laughs> uh, God, God revealed that. On them, is there, is there, is there? No, no, this is, 